got all kinds of ramifications. It's, it's just intellectually dishonest. Of a folk in Tennessee are as faithful as can be. And they know the Bible teaches what is right. They believe in God above and his great undying love. And they know they are protected by his might. Then to Dayton came a man with his new idea so grand. And he said we came from monkeys long ago. But in teaching his belief, Mr. Scopes found only grief, for they would not let their old religion go. You may find a new belief, it will only bring you grief, for a house that's built on sand is sure to fall. And wherever you may turn, there's a lesson you will learn that the old religion's better after all. Dayton in Tennessee is America's first and most famous battleground in the conflict between religion and science. Seventy years ago, John Scopes a teacher at the local high school was sent to trial for violating the Butler Act of 1925. This made it an offense in Tennessee to teach evolution. Amidst unprecedented media fanfare, two legal giants, Clarence Darrow and William Jennings Bryan, battled over the right to teach a scientific theory which was seen to challenge the divine creation. Scopes was found guilty and fined $100. The Butler Act was not repealed until 1967, and the monkey trial, as it came to be known, left a deep divide between science and religion, which remains evident today. Dayton is still a creationist town, and its people form the rock on which the current anti-evolution bill is founded. This guy asked me from New York, he said, uh, what part of the South are you from? I said, Chattanooga. Not really Chattanooga, a little old town above uh, Chattanooga called Dayton. He said, you mean monkey town? <laughs> he put us on the map, you know? I personally, and the majority of the people, I'd say the people of a whole, as a whole in this county, has no objection to evolution being taught as a theory but we do all object to, be, to it being taught as a fact. Uh, this has been, a, uh, has always been a community that believed in uh, Genesis creation, and they always will. I think most of us think of evolution in more of a scientific atmosphere than we do in a religious or, or a creative atmosphere. If we think of evolution maybe in animals, in, in, in the, the sea, creatures, that type of thing, but not man, not man. Just I believe in evolution, though, because look at Clyde. He's evolved into a real nice guy, even though it took 86 years. <laughs> I like to think that my granddaddy walked on the face of the earth rather than hanging by his tail out of a tree. Modern creationism does not stand on faith alone. It has built its own science to prove the biblical account in Genesis. One school of creation science is based on the story of Noah and the Flood, searching for evidence that all of humankind and present-day creatures of the land and air are descended from those which came off the ark. Dr. Kurt Wise is a highly qualified scientist. He's also a creationist. Educated at Harvard University, he now teaches creation science in Dayton at a small biblical college named after the man who prosecuted John Scopes. 
Wise has sacrificed a career in mainstream science for his creationist views. The Bible tells us that the land creatures and the air creatures survived the flood on Noah's Ark. That there were representatives of each kind of animal, each type of animal on the Ark. They got off the Ark and then those representatives spread across the surface of the Earth to repopulate or refill the Earth after the flood. In creationism, that biblical type, that group of organisms, the biblical kind, doesn't equate to a species. It doesn't correspond to a species. It corresponds to something larger than a species, something we're currently studying. We suspect at this point that it corresponds to something about the level of a family. If that's the case, there were only several hundred organisms on the ark that got off the ark to repopulate the world. If there was ever such an event, it should have left evidence all about of it having happened. For example, I'm doing research out in Death Valley region right now. And uh, there we're mapping a region where there are there's a, a sedimentary rock layer that's 3,000 feet thick. And in that rock, there are other rocks. And this is traditionally interpreted to be a glacial deposit. Dropped there, a glacier picked off a bunch of rocks and dropped them in there. Uh, and, and created this deposit. The problem is, there are plenty of evidences in that particular area that this wasn't a glacial environment. This is uh, evidence of an underwater landslide. See, we would say that that was actually the initial moments or the initial events of Noah's flood, that it was a, a global phenomenon. It affected sediment across all of North America. Then when we find sediments there, that we can trace across the United States to even rocks here, we have evidence of, of sediments across an entire continent. Again, the sort of thing we would expect in a global flood. Dayton's creationist inheritance spans the generations. The science teacher at the local high school shares the creationist views of his students. The law as it stands requires Joe Wilkie to teach evolution only, but it's a struggle. The young people of Dayton hold tightly to their belief in the Bible. Unable to deny the word of God to his students or himself, Joe Wilkie walks a thin line between science and religion. Creationists like to be lumpers. They like to put a lot of organisms together in a group. Evolutionists like to be splitters. They like to set off a whole bunch of different organisms. An evolutionist says that there's natural reproductive boundaries out there that prohibit dogs, wolves, coyotes, foxes from reproducing. I believe that I give the evolutionary view equal time and I believe I give it a fair shake. I believe I give the creation view a fair shake. Wait a minute, you don't even think it's a theory? Well, I mean, it's not really, I mean, basically it's not been proven. I mean, we had to be put here, some, some supernatural thing. I mean, we couldn't have evolved from such a simple organism into what we are now. I mean, there's no way, the way that they think that it all started. I don't think God has to have evolution to make a world. I don't think a supernatural being has to use a natural process. I know a lot of people that believe he did use a, a natural process, but I don't personally believe that a supernatural, all-powerful, omnipotent being has to use a natural process to create. All right, you got your supernatural, which would be God, and he actually, like, he said that he put us here and then put all the animals and plants and stuff to make us survive. How could I say to a student, your ideas are trash. Keep them out of this room. I don't want to hear them. We don't want to discuss that. Don't you know you're being one of those hick hillbillies believing all that religious stuff? I mean, how could I say that to a student and look at that student and I the next day and say, I respect you as a person. 
I mean, I couldn't do it. We didn't like you ball from anything. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, how can, like, an African-American person evolve from a white person? We're different skins. 